Well, in class today, you guys had an opportunity to think about a problem, to see, do you have enough skills to be able to solve a problem like this problem before even learning the algebra that goes along with it? Well, some of you did great, and some of you needed a little bit of algebra. So I am going to show you how to use algebra. Now, I do expect that you have some prior knowledge about distance, rate, and time. Many of you know that distance is equal to the rate multiplied by the time, dirt. Um, and you've probably done many questions like that. So on Canvas, there is a Google form, and I'd like you to go to that Google form and answer these three questions on the Google form. I want to see what prerequisite skills, in other words, what prior knowledge do you have about distance, rate, and time? Okay, once you have done that, then come back to the video, and we're going to do three exemplary problems together. Now, I know you've already gone to the Google form, so now let's look at an exemplary problem. So the first problem we're looking at is we've got someone biking south at 20 kilometers per hour. Okay, so I know I have someone biking south. And then we have Dean is leaving at the same point, but he's leaving 15 minutes later to catch up with her. Now, do you notice that this is the exact same problem you guys thought about in class? So now we're going to see how the algebra relates. And we just use the names Anthony and Tristan in class. Okay, so we've got Carla starting off, and then 15 minutes later, Dean goes chasing after her. And we want to know when they catch up to each other. So the first thing we always do is look at what is the question. The question is how long will it take Dean to catch up with Carla? So the question is we're looking for time. How long? That is time for Dean to travel, basically, right? So the answer we're looking for is time. Okay, now what are the facts? Well, we are told that Carla, she is going south, so we know the direction, and we know her rate is 20 kilometers per hour, and we know her time. She leaves at noon, okay? We, at least we know the time she left. We don't know the amount of time she traveled. Now, Dean, we're told that he's going the same direction. So you can see this is a motion problem where the two people are going the same direction. That's our type one. Now, Dean is traveling a little faster. And Dean leaves, though, 15 minutes later. So in other words, when he catches up, he will have been traveling 15 minutes shorter than Carla. Okay, now again, let's, we always have to define our variable, so we look back at the question, and what do I need to answer? I need to answer what is Dean's time, okay? So if X is the amount of time that Dean spent on the bike, then how much time did Carla spend on the bike? Well, she started 15 minutes before, so she spent 15 minutes more on the bike. Now notice this is in minutes. Oh dear, but my rate is in hours. So 15 minutes is how much of an hour? Well, if you look at the clock, you could see that it's one fourth of an hour. So we might want to express our units all in the same amount as far as minutes or hours, okay? So we're comparing two people. We have Dean and we have Carla. And we know that rate times time is equal to distance. So I'm going to make a chart, and I'm going to fill in my facts. I find that charts work really well for these types of problems because you can organize your work extremely well. So this is a, a problem-solving strategy to make a chart. So now let us fill in the facts here. So we know the rate of both the Dean and Carla. That's a fact we can fill in, okay? There we go. And time, we established that x is going to represent Dean's time, so then x plus 1 fourth will represent Carla's time. Now, how do we find the distance? Well, we go rate times time. So it's going to be 24 times x for Dean, and then 20 times x plus, let me move that out of the way, 1 fourth will represent Carla's distance. Now, if you look at the diagram, what do we know about the two distances traveled for both Carla and Dean? Well, they traveled the same distance. 
the distance D traveled was equal to the distance that Carla traveled, because he caught up with her. And now we would solve for X. Well, we know how to do this. You can see that we're applying our skills of multiplying a monomial times a binomial. And then we subtract 20X, so we end up with 4X is equal to 5. So the answer is 5 fourths, or 1 and 1 fourth. Now, before I put a box around it, whoops, 1 and 1 fourth, not H, I have to look again. What was the question? The question is, how long did Dean travel? Well, we have to write that answer in a sentence. So Dean traveled for an hour. Now, 1 fourth is what? We wouldn't say 1 and 1 fourth hours, would we? Well, maybe. But Dean traveled for, generally we'll convert it to minutes, 1 hour and 15 minutes. There we go. Now check, did we answer the question? Yes, we did. The question was how long did Dean travel and I used my units. Now that's the first type of example. This is where people are moving in the same direction. Now you should have all of these notes taken down because these are going to be your three example problems that you will refer to later. Now our next example is what happens if we've got motion going on but it's the opposite direction or possibly they're going toward each other. So in this example, I have Mary Beth and Michael are leaving school, traveling in the opposite directions. Okay, so here's school, and they're going in opposite directions. So we can just get a feel for what's going on. Michael is walking, and Mary Beth is biking, averaging six kilometers more per hour. If they're 18 kilometers apart after an hour and a half, what is the rate of each? Okay, first thing first, look at the question. I need to find the rate for Mary Beth and Michael, okay? There you go. That's the question we're going to answer. Now let's write down the fact. Well, first of all, the most important fact to begin um, putting this together in a diagram and classifying is they are going in opposite directions, okay? Now we know that Michael is walking, so he's going to be going slower, right? So his rate will be slower. And we are told that Mary Beth is biking, so she's going to be faster. And actually we're told that she is averaging six kilometers more than Michael. Okay, so six kilometers, was it six kilometers per hour, more than, which means plus, Michael. So whatever Michael's rate is, she's going to be six kilometers more than that. Okay, we're told that they are 18 kilometers apart. Okay, so if I look at this diagram here, they're going to be 18 kilometers apart after one and a half hours. Okay, and so I could say at one and a half hours. Oh, so we're given the distance and the time. Well, that makes sense. So what are we going to let X be? Well, since we know that Mary Beth is compared to Michael, let's let X be Michael's rate. And then Mary Beth is going to be X plus 6, because she's 6 more than she's going faster. Now, again, for the distance rate time problems, a chart works very well. So we're comparing Michael to Mary Beth. And we know that rate times time is equal to distance. Okay, so I'm going to have my little chart here. So it's going to be rate multiplied by time will be equal to distance. Okay, let's fill in the fact. So the rate, we have established that Michael will be x. Let me get a different color here. Mary Beth will be x plus 6. We are told the time is 1.5 um, for both of them. So according to this, the distance is going to be 1.5x and then 1.5 quantity x plus 6. Okay, but what is my equation going to be? So the equation then for this, sorry for that interruption, someone wanted math lab. We know that the total distance is 18 kilometers. Well, Michael plus Mary Beth's distance, together they will have traveled 18 kilometers. So Michael's distance is 1.5x. Mary Beth is 1.5 quantity x plus 6 is equal to 18. Oh, so notice here, 
I add the distances together to get the total. As compared to the last time, they were distances were equal. So in doing the algebra, which actually is kind of fun, huh? 1.5 times 6 is 9. I hope I didn't make a mistake there. So I get 3x plus 9 equals 18. Wow, this is going to work out nice. Is 9, so x equals 3. But again, before we write our sentence, we have to check what was the question. So the rate. So x represents Michael. So Michael was traveling at a rate. So Michael was traveling 3 kilometers per hour. And Mary Beth was traveling 9 miles, kilometers per hour. Had to be a little fast. Very good. Now we just have one more type of scenario for these problems. The last scenario is when they're doing a round trip. So you're going there and back. So in this example, we've got Mark driving his car to the garage at 48 kilometers per hour. And then he walks back home at 8 kilometers per hour. The drive took 10 minutes less than the walk. How far did the, how far did Mark walk and for how long? Okay, so basically of visualizing this, I'm going to drive to the mechanic or the garage. So this is driving. And then I have to walk home because I left my car in the garage so that the repairman could fix it. Okay, so this is Mark. So we want to find out then how far did Mark walk so we want to find out the distance for walking. Okay, that's not very good grammar. Far did Mark walk? There we go. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, and we want to know for how long was he walking? Okay, so we're wanting to find distance and time. So now the information we're given is Mark's rate was 48 kilometers per hour when driving. So this is 48. Okay. And then we were told that, and then he walked back home at 8 kilometers. So walking was 8 kilometers. Great. So we're given the rate for both parts of the round trip. This is 8. Okay. Knowing that distance equals rate times time, so let us find out that we need to find the time and the distance, okay? Well, we'll be using our chart, right? We'll have walk and we'll have drive. And we know that we have rate times time will equal distance, right? So since we'll be able to find the distance by multiplying the rate by time, let's let T represent the walking time, since that's what we want to find out, is how long he was walking. And we can find the time by multiplying the rate times time. And so if he was walking for um, t minutes, then how long was he driving for? Hmm. How do we figure that out? Okay. Oh, there's one fact that's kind of hidden by my recording. The drive took 10 minutes less than the walk home. Okay. Well, it's t minus 10 for driving. But that's minutes. Oh, dear. How do I change that into terms of hours? So 10 minutes out of 60 is how many hours? Well, 10 out of 60 is 1 6. So it's t minus 1 6. That would be in terms of hours. So let's fill in our chart now. Okay. So for walking, the rate is 8 kilometers per hour. For driving, it's 48 kilometers per hour. The time spent walking, we said, was t. Driving is t minus 1, 6. So then the distance is 8t. And then this would be 48t time minus 1, 6. Now, we have to be able to write an equation comparing the distances. Now, do these two distances add up to a number, or are they equal to one another? Well, since it's a round trip, we would know that the distance to the garage is equal to the distance back from the garage. And now we can solve for t. You'll notice, actually, the algebra isn't too hard here. It's just figuring out the facts, right? So if I then, who, what should I do? Subtract the, I could um, subtract it so I would get negative 40t equals negative 8, divide, then I get 1 fifth. Well, what does that mean? That's the time he spent. 
So it's one fifth of an hour, which if I change that to minutes, that would be 20 minutes. So he spent 20 minutes walking. Now we have to be, oh, nope, I just made a mistake. Someone walked into my room and it distracted me. Let me do the math here. So it's one fifth of an hour. Wait, am I reading that right? Oh, I got distracted. La, 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 la. So time is one fifth. Okay. Oh, I'm totally distracted now. So one fifth of an hour would be 60, 20 minutes. Yeah, I had that right. What was I thinking? 20 minutes. And then what else do we have to answer? Then we have to answer how far did Mark walk? So we want to find the distance. So then if I go, or one fifth, his distance for walking is eight times t. So the distance will be eight times t, or one fifth, which would be eight fifths, or one and three fifths, right? So that would make one hour, and three fifths out of 60 is, is it 20? Wait, I'm doing this wrong. One fifth is equal to how many out of 60? 5x equals 60. Ah, oh, ha, ha. See, I knew I was making a mistake. It's actually 12 minutes. 12 minutes was the time spent walking. So 8 times 1 fifth is 1 and 3 fifths, or 1 hour and 36 minutes. There you go, folks. Now make sure you have these notes and answer the Google form when you come back to class.